There, it's 18 minutes to 10. This is BBC Surrey Breakfast. Now, we first spoke to the Surrey surgeon Mark Whiteley on his show last March. He'd been riding through India on a 1950s motorbike. We're going to speak to him in just a moment. But right then, let me introduce my studio guest, Mark Whiteley, who founded the Whiteley Clinic in Guildford, celebrating its 10th anniversary. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Nick. Now, your speciality is uh, it's pioneering work in removing varicose veins, which is the bane of many women's and men's lives nowadays, isn't it? Actually, the... Uh the latest uh, research has actually shown that between one in two and one in three people suffer from it. So it's not just the varicose veins that you see. For every person who knows they've got varicose veins, somebody else has what's called chronic venous incompetence, which we call hidden varicose veins to make it a bit more obvious. So that means for every person who's walking around and sees something, somebody else has got aching legs, swelling ankles, itching of the legs. And if they don't get that sorted out surgically with the new techniques, it goes on to red stains around the ankles, brown stains Ooh. around the ankles and let venture ulcers. Ooh, what does varicose actually mean? The problem with it is what we have to go back to sort of ancient Greece. So people used to define uh, things that they saw. So varicose means enlarged. So when you see a big vein on the surface, that's a varicose vein. The trouble is the underlying cause of it is actually the valves inside. If your leg's not pumping properly and blood is falling the wrong way down your leg and causing damage at the ankle, if you're lucky, you see this great big vein on the surface um, because it's uh, one of the branches comes to the surface. That's called a varicose vein but for every one of those people somebody else doesn't have anything to see on the surface and they over the ages from 10 12 14 all the way 20s 30s 40s all the way through your life you drop more valves more blood goes the wrong way and you end up with these symptoms around your ankles. Uh, and what's the cause of dropping more valves? Is it just you're getting on a bit? Well, this is mainly genetic. It runs in families. So the, the majority of it is a genetic problem. And then, of course, the longer you're alive, the longer those genes have to work. And so it's a genetic thing. It runs in families on the whole. The valves stop working. The blood goes the wrong way. And so the key to it is finding out which of those valves have stopped working. So when I, when I trained as a junior doctor, all varicose veins were treated the same. There's a general anaesthetic cut in the groin strip them out and then they all grew back again what we've found is if you do local anaesthetic with pinhole surgery and then a combination of treatments depending on exactly which sort of vein you have it could be endovenous laser it could be radio frequency it could be coil embolization it might be foam sclerotherapy not any one of those is correct what we have to do is we have to do a special scan called a duplex scan to find out what's going on in that individual person and then choose the right sort of selection of treatments and when we do that, that's when we get the results we get. And in terms of uh, the uh, actual nature of varicose veins, they, they often get confused on the body for thread veins and the like. Or are, are they related in any way or are they completely different? No, that's an excellent question. About uh, one in two people suffer from thread veins of their legs. And for years, people have gone, especially ladies, have gone to beauticians and gone to cosmetic clinics thinking they're not related and on the whole got very bad results. In 2001, there was a research study from New Zealand, and what they did is they took a whole load of people who were about to have their thread veins treated, and they scanned them, and they found that 89% of them had underlying hidden varicose veins. Oh, really? And the reason that they keep coming back again is because people aren't dealing with the underlying problem. And it's the fact that the blood is just not going in the right, right direction around should, the body. It should be being pumped back to your heart, and instead, because of these valves being faulty, when you walk, it goes back towards your heart. But every time you sort of lift your leg up for the next step, it falls back down causes the damage mm. so therefore if you have thread veins it's essential you get a scan first and you get any underlying problems sorted out it's like if you're painting a wall at your house you'd want to fix the foundations first before painting the wall or else you just get more cracks why is it that you decided to leave the nhs and set up a, a private practice well I, it came about really because the nhs stopped funding varicose veins and venous incompetence which we've just heard about varicose veins being stopped funding again Absolutely. by nhs sorry, haven't we? and this has been going on for many years it's been slowly coming in and nowadays you only get funded if you've got one or two uh, sort of end things such as bleeding two lots of clots or ulcers now although we can treat those and that a lot of my work even now in the private sector is actually curing those if we can get people before that we can prevent them and as we said it's one to two to one in three uh, one in two to one in three people so there's a massive number of people who require to have the prevention really to stop them getting to that problem now the nhs i feel terribly sorry for it i was in it for 25 years and they just don't have the money to really deal with that. Uh, so they're really in a, a situation of firefighting. They're only dealing with those people who have 
gone through their lives, got to the point where it's so severe they have to have something done. Now, the trouble is that means that if I'd stayed in the NHS, all of my expertise would have been lost, really, because I would have had to do an arterial surgery and other sorts of surgery. And varicose veins would have only been a very small part of my day, which is why surgeons who deal you know with all other things can never develop the techniques really that we use in our varicose vein practice so going private allows you to specialize i mean it's, mm. it's just interesting i mean you you were booked in as a guest an awful long time ago but yes. so many stories seem to have come come in about the nhs uh, today i guess it's going to be a year for the nhs where we Absolutely. hear an awful lot about the, the changes in it um, i just wonder if i could get your reaction to the our lead story the, the rather scandalous tale of uh, care for the elderly in two surrey hospitals which were deemed to be two of the 10 worst cases that the parliamentary ombudsman had come across uh, but also uh, indicative of a wider systemic failing with the NHS and its care for the elderly. Well, I started in the NHS back in 1986, and so I've been through many, many changes and seen how it's changed. And, I mean, as I'm not in the NHS, I can't really comment on the current status because I've not been in there for 10 years. I just think there's a slight difficulty that over the last many years, in the last two decades, there seems to be an altered focus away from just standard nursing care and medical care towards efficiencies. And I think really what has to lead the way has to be patient care and results. And that's not results of getting people through the system, but on clinical results, giving the best for people. And I think it's, it is a very hard thing. You know, you know, politicians trying to make sound bites, trying to show the way. It's actually got to be led really from doctors and nurses, because they're the ones who see the patients and just incentivizing them or giving them targets isn't necessarily going to be the right way forward for a profession and what about the constant revolutions that seem to be happening you know the top-down reorganizations of the nhs the, the latest one you know it's, it's a new government a new mm. a new way of running this this extraordinary institution which is so well loved by so many people but also cost the exchequer an arm an arm and a leg <laughs> that's the wrong phrase to use <laughs> just in this leg. case but yeah um, but you, you see what i mean yeah no i think you're absolutely right there's a one of the lovely things that goes around the internet and I wish I could remember the quote exactly but it says whenever we've found a problem in our lives we always reorganised rather than trying to sort it out and that sounds very very sort of uh, current but in fact it was written on a wall in ancient Rome and I think it's part of the human condition is that when we have a problem rather than say right what's the problem working way through it we tend to just reorganise and say it's all going to be better next year. So what about the, the Whiteley Clinic you've been going for 10 years H how many people do you employ is it, is it just you doing the surgery or have you got a team that you that's working with you now? No, well, now we have a whole team. So basically there's about 27 people working there, so it's quite a big uh, thing, really. Now we have two floors over in the research park. One is clinical, where we have not only the Whiteley Clinic for veins and now this new sweating operation we've brought into the country, which is our latest sort of invention and innovation, but we also now have an aesthetic side called Absolute Aesthetics, which is a division. And Vicky Smith, who you interviewed, I think, recently, who runs that, has just actually um, won a research contract, and we're actually the UK centre for this new non-invasive fat removal called liposonics so you know everything we do is about teaching research and pushing things forward and presumably you can feed that knowledge back into the nhs oh, if, if they've got the, the funding or the money to to hear you and take on board your skills and expertise what what we did in the whiteley clinic is we as i said the downstairs is all about treating patients but the upstairs we have a, another thing called the clinical exchange which is a 48 person lecture theater which has cameras down into our theatres and our ultrasound. We actually teach all doctors and nurses who want to come and uh, see what we're doing. We also run uh, courses for children who want to go into medicine. So the whole thing that we're doing is about spreading our knowledge. And, of course, it's not for private, that. It's for absolutely anybody who wants to increase their knowledge on any of the things we do. Well, Mark, thank you so much indeed for coming no in problem. and updating us. Happy anniversary thank for you 10 very years much. of the Whiteley Clinic. And I'm sure um, we'll, it won't be too long before we see you again. Thanks so much. Appreciate Nick. your time. That's uh, Mark Whiteley, who's uh, the founder of the Whiteley Clinic. Clinic, which sounds like it's going from strength to strength. It's six minutes to ten.